Hey, you're here with Alex, and we're going to be checking out Seymour Duncan's new signature pickup for Brandon Ellis, the Dyad Parallel Access. So for those of you who do not know who Brandon Ellis is, he is the current lead guitar player for the Black Dahlia Murder and has been for quite some time. He also has a pretty sick Jackson signature Kelly and for 2024, he has his official signature pickup. Brandon also has a very unique guitar style compared to a lot of modern guitar players of today and he definitely really sticks out. He's probably one of the cleanest guitar players that I've ever come across. And um, if you wanna check him out, he's also on Instagram. So there is a very interesting story as to how this pickup was created. I'm not gonna go into full detail in this video as to how it was created, but Seymour Duncan has an awesome video that relates to everything as far as the construction of it all the way down to all the nuances. Essentially, he had two Seymour Duncan pickups that he really liked. And what he did was that he spliced the north and south coils and spliced it into one pickup. The only guitar player that I know of that is a insane tinker like him would be such as Van Halen. The overall design is based off of a parallel axis. So as you can see, I have the dyad parallel axis in the bridge as the trend bucker. And in this Jackson, I have an original parallel axis for the neck. With Brandon's original pickup creation that he homebrewed basically, he had double Seymour Duncan logos on the north and south coils. So that is why you see it on this particular production. They kept it to retain that kind of aesthetic. But not only does that have a interesting look to the pickup, but if you were to flip the uh, poles, it would actually create a warmer sound if you have a brighter guitar. With that said, it is going through my personal Jackson USA SL2H. Nothing super crazy modified, so I basically have the Ernie Ball string dampener on the top here, and I also have a little bit of foam in the back for reducing the spring noise. The other modifications I did was replace the tremolo post with the titanium post from FU Tones. As far as the control cavity goes, I'm going through a Burns 500K uh, low friction volume pot, and I have a treble bleed installed in between, which is a 0 0.001 microfarad. For the tone pot, I have a CTS 500K no load pot. Essentially, when it's rolled up to 10, it bypasses the tone circuit completely. Some would argue that it doesn't completely bypass it, and I'll do some tests later on if I do see a difference with it going directly to the volume without the tone, or if it does measure equally. The tone also has a microfarad uh, orange drop that measures at 0 0.022 microfarads. I currently have two patches and they are going straight through the AxeFX3 directly into Reaper. And I have one of the rhythm tones going through a 6505 and I also have the lead sound going through a 5153 on the blue channel. And for the IRs, I'm actually using the new Fractal Dyna cabs. I'm going through the Mesa Boogie straight and I'm going through a condenser mic, uh, essentially in between the center cone. If you do want the preset, maybe I will post it on the Fractal forums, but let me know in the comments below if you would like that. Other than that, that's pretty much it and we will go into some of the tones right now.
ahead and bought this pickup through Sweetwater. Currently it is retailing at 180 US dollars. Depending on where you live, that may fluctuate. What you get in the box is essentially the humbucker itself. And you also get the pickup ring to install it in and the two screws and two springs. So my particular pickup is reading at 19.4 um, as far as the resistance. When I tested it with my multimeter though, when it's fully installed, it was reading at 18.1. So I don't know where I'm losing that difference in voltage, but we'll check it out later on. So Brandon was a heavy hand in the producing side of the recent Black Dahlia Murder album Verminous that came out in 2020. And with this pickup in mind, he wanted to create something that would really help in the recording environment. Not only that, but the way that this pickup is EQ'd will also work greatly in an overall band mix. What this means is that once it goes through the post effects in a mixing and mastering process, it's gonna sound not as overly compressed as a lot of modern metal. The first thing I noticed about this pickup is that it is a hot pickup, really hot. And it's very interesting because it has a lot of clarity within it, but it doesn't have a lot of compression in the overall sound. Compression that I'm referring to that it doesn't have is like the kind of pull me under kind of chug, you know, that you would get in like another pickup. Not saying that it can't do that, but with a little bit of tweaking, you can get into that era. The low end is actually pretty broad, but it's not overpowering when you're playing. The mid range is slightly notched down and then the high end kind of just takes off. With that, you're gonna get like this really aggressive pickup attack essentially. And depending on how you adjust your overdrive and your treble side, you can get it to be really kind of racer x -y. And it's probably one of the more kind of sizzle end top end guitar pickups that I've played. I've done a couple palm mute tests with another pickup and I have it in this RG770 off camera here. And this has the DiMarzio John Petrucci Illuminator set. And the bridge is measured at 14 um, ohms. So we're gonna check out that resistance and compare it with this as far as like the palm mutes. <laughs> So being more of a strict metal pickup, there's gonna be two sides of the story with this pickup. Now, granted, this pickup is strictly made for Brandon himself and for the particular tone that he's chasing. Some people may love that kind of really, really sharp attack kind of sounding, not too compressed uh, of an overall sound. And then there are gonna be guitar players that don't really care for that sound and they want it to be a little bit more, uh, more percussive and more compressing. Then there are gonna be certain guitar players that just don't like the overall sound because you can dial down the high-end sizzle on it, but it is still kind of present there. One thing to note is Seymour Duncan worked in relationship with Brandon to make sure that they made a pickup that made him happy. What makes him happy may not make other people happy. However, I do find that there is a lot in this pickup 
that will help you create your own sound versus sounding exactly like him. So the price may not be the greatest point of this pickup and I would say like in comparison with other pickup companies, you can get like a set of Fishman Fluence Moderns for around 269. So that is still under the 180 per pickup. Um, if you were to go through like an EMG set, I believe they're roughly around 199, which is like 100 per set. I think the only pickup that comes close into the price of the Steamer Duncan Custom Shop pickups would be the bare knuckle pickups. Some of those can go up to around 140 and some of the discontinued ones can go up for a little bit more in the resale market. Although the price is pretty high for just this pickup, I'm gonna say it is worth checking out just because of how different this pickup is. If you do have anything extra you'd like to say about this pickup, if you personally have it yourself, tell me in the comments below and we can have a cool discussion there. I'm usually pretty active in the comments. I hope you do like this video. If you do have a chance, like, subscribe, hit the notification bell. If you didn't like it, that is perfectly fine. I know there's other players out there that are better than me and do videos better than me. So, but if you do like it, I'll try to do more videos for you guys. So that wraps up the video. Definitely give the pickup to try and then we'll see you guys next time.